think we're up and rolling now, so thanks for waiting. God is good. And even in this time of difficulty, he is worthy of our praise this morning.
Navidad vale Father, the orphans, your kindness makes us whole. You shoulder our weakness, and your strength becomes our own. You're making me like you, clothing me in white, bringing beauty to ashes. You have been right, free of all her gifts. Word of all her shame, known by her to me. That's why I sing your praise. It'll ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will never be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You will be praised, you will be praised. With the angels and saints, we sing worthy are you, Lord. You will be praised, you will be praised. in song but also in prayer and going through a season like we're going through now with the, the isolation and the always changing and so many questions it makes it so clear that we need prayer at the heart of everything we do and a part of prayer is celebration it's easy when, when things seem to be unraveling all around us the to just see those things, but to take a step back and to remember the many blessings that we have. The, that we're able to still come together and, and worship via online. It's not the same as what we desire to be together, but for now it's what we have. And we need to give thanks for that and be a part of that. So we need to give, give praise in our prayer. We need to give Thanks for the just wonderful life that we have that God has given us. We need to just be thankful. And then from there, we can give Him the concerns, the worries, the anxiety that we're feeling, and just put it on Him. And not carry it ourselves, but let Him take it. So as we continue the worship during this time, I just want to encourage you to give thanks and give to the Lord, which is your burden, whatever it is right now. Maybe you're concerned because you still have to go to work. Maybe you're concerned because you can't go to work. Whatever your burden is, just give it to Him. And let Him deal with it. And just let Him be your rock.
let the king of my heart be the mountains where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom of my life oh he is my song you are Oh. 
Dear Heavenly Father, you are so good. And we are so blessed, Lord, that we could worship our Creator, our Father in Heaven, because He loved us so much He sent His Son to die and be risen from the grave for us so that we might just choose to seek and to love and follow him. Lord, we just come before you with all that we've been going through. As a nation, as a state, as a, as a church, Lord, we just give it to you and we lay it at your feet and we ask, Lord, that you will just give us patience Lord, that you will answer the questions that can't be answered, that you will bring peace where there only seems to be anxiety and, and angst. Lord, I ask that you would just bring comfort through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we give, we give thanks that you have sent your Holy Spirit to comfort us, to lead us, and to guide us. Lord, we ask that you will help us to set our heart on you, Lord, so, so we can be led and we can be comforted. Lord, help us not to, to look to ourselves or look to man for the answers, but that we'll look to you, Lord, during not only a time like this, but each and every day of our lives. Lord, we ask that we will seek you for the answers and not our government and not our, our, our senators and not the, the, the governors of our states not the leaders in our local area, but that we'll look to you for the answers that we need for our lives. Lord, we ask that you will help us to have the, the fortitude to protect ourselves and to make wise decisions. Lord, we give thanks that we can look to your word and know that you have so much planned for us. You have such great blessings for us, Lord, but we must seek you. And Lord, we ask that you will help each and every one of us during this time. Lord, whatever our brokenness is, Lord, we lay it before you. And we ask that you will separate as far as the east is from the west. Lord, you say that if your people will humble themselves and seek you, you will heal their land. Lord, we ask that each of us will humble ourselves and, and put our brokenness at your feet and we'll let you heal us. That we won't try to fix it ourselves, but we'll let you work and let you be our guiding light so we can be the light that you desire us to be. Lord, we give you praise for this day that you have blessed us with. We ask that you will just Help each of us to see the blessings that you have given us during this time, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, if you, you see when our, our start time was this morning um, on our, our live stream, we had a few uh, technical difficulties with the internet. Um, it seems to be that since everyone is at home and everyone is online, um, every once in a while we're going to have uh, some issues with that. I believe we have them worked out uh, this week to, so we can uh, get this message out to you this morning in our worship. And so um, if it is to the point to where you're not able to get it now, we will be uploading it so you can uh, listen to it and watch it later um, on Facebook or on YouTube uh, as well from our channel. 
Boy, things have really been crazy the last few weeks, haven't they? And it seems like as we get an answer for one question, there's 10 more questions to go with it. It seems like just as we think we're getting closer to the finish line, they move the finish line. And it kind of, it's just kind of how life is sometimes. So just as we think we're starting to get things figured out, we're starting to get a plan for things, things change. And it's so clear, at least seems to be clear to me during a time like this, that we just need to be ready to be in the moment that we're in and to give praise and to be thankful that we're in that moment. And that sometimes what we're desiring and we want to get back to is less than what God has for us. As we look at Palm Sunday this morning, and the triumphant entry of Christ. Jesus is coming in to Jerusalem. And he's coming on the final voyage of his three-year ministry. He's been out teaching and healing and feeding and just doing miraculous things. And before this moment, he has been trying to, in essence, guard who he is as God's son. He has been trying to, to build up, in essence, uh, this ministry that will draw people to him. For the moment that is to come and culminate his ministry and start his final task on Good Friday. He's coming in, preparing for a time of feast and remembering. And he's coming in triumphantly. And the way this whole story builds is it, it's kind of interesting because he comes in so humble that he doesn't even have his own cult to ride. He has to, in essence, borrow a cult. To ride in like a king would on a borrowed colt. And it, it's interesting because the people are so excited in this moment. How did the, the word of mouth get out? How did people know that he was coming? How did it, how did it all happen to where people would be lining the streets and cheering him as he entered? And it's the culmination of the ministry and the plan that started from the beginning of time when God chose to give man free will. And because of that, there would be brokenness and separation between him and humanity. And for that separation to end, there would have to be a sacrifice greater than the sin. And that sacrifice had to be his only begotten son. So Jesus' ministry started when Mary, the virgin mother, became pregnant with the Christ child. And the miraculous moments and miracles that took place all through his life are coming to a culmination. And Israel has been looking and waiting for a victorious Messiah king. The people of Israel had been waiting for a king, a Messiah for over 500 years. And if you look at their history, one, they still had a pseudo king in the last few hundred years of their divided kingdom. It wasn't all or what God wanted for them at all or what they wanted at all. So for a long span of time, they've had the desire to be the nation and be like what they were under King David. But see, the problem and issue with that is even when they had the King David and then Solomon, his son, 
before the kingdom was divided, it still wasn't a perfect kingdom. Because it still wasn't fully what God intended or desired for his people. But it was much better for them, at least in their thoughts and their minds, than what they were living with under the oppression of the Roman Empire. They had to pay taxes to Rome. They had soldiers in their towns and in their cities. They had tax collectors who were a big part of Jesus' ministry as he ministered to people and found their brokenness and helped them find wholeness through him. The people of Israel have been waiting and seeking someone to come and give them a nation in an area. They were looking for a country. And that is what some of their desire was for things to be returned to, the way they once were. Much how we kind of want things to return to how they were pre-COVID-19. And it would be nice for things to be back to where we could just go out, we could go to sporting events. This week was not a fun week for me. Um, the third was supposed to be opening day for high school baseball. And it's kind of one of those things, whenever they schedule a game for the 3rd of April in northern Michigan, you kind of chuckle like, like that's ever going to happen. And here this year, it was a very sunny, beautiful day on Friday. And we could have had a game, but there's no season because of the separation that we're in because of the COVID-19 right now. And oh, how I looked forward to watching Jacob, my youngest child, my last son to play high school baseball to to be playing baseball this year as a sophomore. And to not have that, it's kind of like that's, that could just be a real negative thing to get caught up on. To not have that, oh, how we would like things to be like they were a month ago, when we could go to sporting events, when we could go hang out with friends, when we could get the whole family together and have a, a birthday party or a celebration for, for whatever the, there was to celebrate. Oh, how we would like things to be how they were. But as I was looking and preparing for this week, I was just thinking of how much God wants for us than how things were. How much God wants us to be in a better place than where we've been. That he wants us to be in his kingdom, living his way, living and loving one another. The prophecy of the promised king. In Zechariah 9.9, 9, it says this, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of, Z of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the full of a donkey. A humble king. It's almost impossible for that to be the case. For an earthly king to be humble. Because a king has power over anyone and everyone in his territory. A king can take and have whatever he wants from his kingdom. He can make people do whatever he desires them to do. And all we have to do is look at the world history and understand it's pretty much impossible for man to be completely humble without pride, without prejudice of some sort or some kind. 
But for Christ, it was who he was, completely and totally humble. He had the ability to eradicate sin in a moment. But there would still be a division between man and God. Because there was a price that had to be paid. And he's choosing to take this journey to the cross to pay that price so that we can be whole. And how important is it for us to remember that grace is a gift freely given and that we should never be proud of ourselves but always humble knowing that it was a gift that was given without strings. That all we have to do is seek. Seek Christ, our Savior, and we'll be whole. The problem is, is we often seek what we want. Or we seek something less than what God has for us. And I believe that is kind of the issue for the crowd as Jesus is coming in. They're cheering and they're seeing him as this hopeful king that is going to free them from Rome. And they miss that he's going to free them so, from so much more than self and their selfishness and their sin. That he's going to have a victory greater than just building a nation. It's going to be an eternal victory over what separates us from his Father. The peaceful entry of Christ. A donkey was a peaceful sign of a king's entry into a city. So a king would ride in on his steed, his horse, when he came back from war to be heralded and praised. But when the king was just coming in peace into his city, he would come on a donkey, a colt. In this passage, it was, the, in this passage I'm going to read, it was the installation of Solomon as king. Not because he went and won a, a battle to be praised by his father, but David is putting him into the kingship. And I didn't put the passage in. So I need my phone, honey, so I can read this. I thought I cut and pasted in. I guess I didn't. So you just have to bear with me for a second. First Kings one thirty eight. So Zodak the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaha, the son of Jehoiada, I love the names of the Old Testament, and the Cherethites and the Pelethites went down and had Solomon ride <clears throat> on King David's mule and brought him to Gahan. There Zodak the priest took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth was split by their noise. He came riding in on a donkey, being placed into the kingship over Israel, being anointed by the priests, and being celebrated by the people. Think of the imagery of that, of just a ticker tape parade, celebrating what the people were looking and hoping for. 
That is the scene that Jesus is coming in as the peaceful king coming in. But there's part of Israel that they want a, a, a king that is going to deliver them from under the yoke of Rome and make them free just to be a nation. But Christ, the king, was coming to give them so much more than that. The peaceful entry of Christ. Jesus had a ministry of humility. He did not do his will, but the Father's will in his ministry. Jesus always was a servant, loving and caring for those he ministered to. Often those at the lowest of stations in life. Whether it was the lepers he healed with just his voice, healing the ten lepers, or the blind man when he spat, and put mud on his eyes. Jesus' ministry was a ministry of loving what the world said was unlovable. Caring for what the world said was un uncareable for. He would eat with tax collectors and their friends. He would go where others would not go and do the opposite of what they thought was right out of love. Jesus' ministry was a ministry of the humble, loving Christ. Because Christ came to heal the broken. He did not just come to claim what was rightfully his, he came to heal that was broken and separated from him. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village in front, <clears throat> in front of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humbly and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, on a foal of a beast of burden. The prophecy... The promise from God that your king would come riding on a donkey. The crowd had, had come around and they're cheering. They've heard of the miracles that he has done. They've heard of the people who had followed him for three days and he didn't want to just send them home because it had been so long he was worried about them that he would, fill, he would feed those multitude with just a few morsels of bread and a few fish. That he would provide out of his abundant love for them when there seemed to not be enough to take care of them. But when he was the provider, he was more than enough. The crowd did not know what was to come in the next week. Though in this moment, they gave praise to the king of kings. I wonder what the moment would have been like if they would have known what was to come in just a few days if they understood what it meant for him to be the king. They did not understand the salvation that rode into town that day. They could see a king and a hope and, and a, a looking to return to a nation of a people. But what rode into that town that day was salvation for all of humanity. 
for a kingdom that would be greater than they ever imagined. What can we learn from Christ's entry? It is easy for us to miss what God is saying and doing for us in good and bad times. They're celebrating Christ coming in, but it would be a few days later, many of those same people would be cheering for him to be crucified. They're cheering, cheering for him to be crucified because the man they cheered was supposed to come and upend the reality they were in under the Roman Empire. And if he wasn't going to do that, if he wasn't going to free himself, if he wasn't going to call his armies from heaven to come and destroy Rome, then they, he wasn't what they were looking for. They missed the point that their salvation rode into town that day. Salvation that was greater than their biggest fault. The greatest sin was not large enough to keep them from their salvation. You see, for in a few weeks time, they will hear a message from Peter, some of those same people, and they will be baptized and join the numbers of the faithful. Because then they will see and know. And I think sometimes in our lives we're missing what God is trying to make happen and work us towards in our lives. And during this time of isolation, we have such an opportunity to grow closer to God and our own families. Which also means there's opportunity to be driven crazy by our own families at times, being around each other so much. But that's why it's so important for us to stay focused on God and what He's doing and seeking to do in our lives each and every day. Whether we're at the highest of highs, the celebration, the victory parade, or if we're at the lowest of low, if we will look to God and see what He has for us, Learn the lessons that he wants us to learn. To take the steps he wants us to take. So many people right now are serving people in such great ways. Thursday I had the opportunity to go and, and, and I went and worked at the uh, Oscoda Food Bank at the fairgrounds. And it was awesome just to see the people there doing so much. In a time where we're Fear can definitely keep people from taking that step to do that. But seeing people come together to help people out in, in a time of need, to make sure people have food at home, was an awesome thing to see. To see the EMS and the sheriffs there working outside, taking the food out, to see all the people, young and old, putting the boxes of food together to serve one another. It's those moments like that that we, we must come to realize and to remember that's what God has called His people to be. To be humble, to be servants, to be loving and caring. And so when we're failing to do that, when we're selfishly upset and frustrated, we need to look to God and give it to Him. And not just look for things to return to how they were, but let's return to things that are better. Loving and caring for one another in a better way. Not letting political stances come between us. Not letting beliefs come between us. But to remember who our creator is, to whose image each and every one of us is made in, and to serve and love one another. What if each of us looked at our life as Christ looked at his? That it's not for his will, but for the Father's will. 
You see, Israel wanted to return to a broken time. Though it was a better time than what they were in, it still wasn't a complete whole time that God has for us and wants for us. Christ came to bring us into a new and different kingdom in a new and different way. Christ didn't just come so our sins would be forgiven. Christ came so that we might be and live in his Father's kingdom. That thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we will look to Christ and who he was and what he did. It is that example we need to look to and seek in our lives each and every day. May we learn to desire the good, to not desire the good old days, but may we seek to create and be a part of a new and better way of life. May we learn through all we are going through to love one another, to put others before ourselves, even when others do not do the same. May we learn to be driven by Christ's love and grace. May that be the celebration that we go out into when this period of time is over. Originally, we thought it was going to be about 15 days. Now it looks like it's going to be about 40 days. May we take this 40 days as a time to be sifted and to grow closer to God so we can live more like Him on the outside of this. And may we look back at the COVID-19 as a time that sifted us so we could love better and be more like Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise for this day. We give you praise that we get to worship you. That when two or more come into your presence together, you are there with them. But Lord, we give you praise that you have sent your Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us, regardless of where we're at or what we're going through. And Lord, we ask that your spirit will fill us with your love. Lord, that we'll seek to learn to love greater each and every day. Lord, we ask that you will take our brokenness and our sin. Lord, that we'll, you'll take our confessions and separate our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. We thank you for your son the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that sacrificed himself so we could be whole, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
the ground his body lay light of the world a darkness slain and bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory the sin of loss is grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of mine guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no shame of man can ever flood me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of hand could ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns and calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand.